Okay, this is uh, Jeff Erickson here. I'm with uh, Simplex Aeroplanes, um, and we're going to show you here how to grade wood for aircraft use. Uh, now, what we have here is we have three pieces of northern white pine. Two of these pieces are specifically eastern white pine, that's just a type of northern white pine. Uh, the third piece here is actually of sugar pine. Um, you can see a little bit of a difference here if we start lining these up. Um, that the, well, especially this one, um, the white pine is obviously wider than the sugar pine. Sugar pine has a little more of a red tint to it. Uh, first thing we want to look for when we're grading wood is we want a nice tight grain and we specifically want, uh, we're going to count the grain lines. So for white pine we're looking for six grain lines per inch. Now this particular piece of wood is three quarters of an inch thick uh, which would equal out to four and a half grain lines per three quarters of an inch. Um, we have 12 to 14 if we were to count these out. So clearly we have enough, right? Um, the next thing we want to look for is how um, straight is the grain, right? Um, and this for this particular piece of wood, the grain is going straight down the board. Um, it's pretty much dead, dead on. Uh, but we do have another example here for this sugar pine where we actually do have some slope, meaning that as the grain is actually slowly moving across the board. Uh, if we were to measure this out, uh, well first let's talk about uh, what's an, what an adequate slope. Um, in our plans we have a page, I just kind of printed this out real quick, but um, we specify what is the maximum grain slope. So for all the species that we list here, uh, spruce, Douglas fir, white pine, western hemlock, it's uh, one inch for every 15 inches. Uh, when we're using a three quarter inch thick piece, be three quarters of an inch for every um, 11 and a quarter inches. So if I look at a couple of grain lines here, I've, I've, I've uh, marked them out where it's one starts, where one ends. So in this particular one, it moves about, we would probably say about 14 inches for every three quarters of an inch, so it would be okay. Uh, if I was to go from this line to this line, um, actually I think it's this one, to, I don't know, maybe this is this one, this one. Um, here we're starting in the middle of the board and from half an inch it goes about half an inch for every nine inches or one inch for every 18 inches, right? So we're still within a parameter there. And the last one here goes much longer. So this one would just barely qualify. Um, it'd be a toss up whether or not you'd want to use it or not. Um, I prefer to just use one where the grain is going straight down or maybe if I'm cutting a nine foot long, excuse me, an eight foot long piece, or I'm looking at an eight foot long piece, or six foot long piece, if it gradually moves from one, you know, maybe it goes, it moves three quarters of an inch for every eight feet, I'd be fine with that. But, um, you know, I try to try to avoid things like this where I'm having to really pull out the ruler. Um, yes, this piece is technically okay, but, uh, you know, we, we still want to kind of, we want to keep our standards a little higher than what are the, really the minimum standards for this. Uh, the next thing we want to look for is the direction of the grain. So in this particular piece, if we look here, if we as we're holding the piece, we have the grain going vertical here. Or of course we could flip it over and we have it going horizontal. But it's pretty dang dead on there, right? Um, that's perfect for when you're doing spar caps on like a wing or fuselage laundry runs. Um, that'd be a great area where you'd want to have that kind of grain direction. Um, sometimes you'll find wood though where you'll see the grain direction is actually going diagonal. Now in that case, that you could use wood that has a diagonal grain for pieces that may be in tension or compression, uh, such as fuselage uh, vertical members or uh, diagonal members, um, in, in what case we're, we're not having any real bending action on the wood. Um, you know, you know, by bending action, I'm looking directly at things like laundrons or spar caps. Um, so those are the ones, and especially because of what they're holding, uh, you really do want to make sure you're getting a perfectly um, flat, you know, horizontal or vertical grain. And usually your plans will specify whether or not, or what the grain direction should be as you're laying out your members. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes you need to do some research. Sometimes it doesn't matter. They just You just need to have uh, good wood in place. So anyway, study the plans you have. You know, every design uh, is different. Um, there are some general parameters you want to look for, and that's what I kind of wanted to lay out here. Um, as as we're, or as you're looking here, we obviously we use the white pine. We like white pine. 
Uh, it's lighter um, than, than spruce um, by about uh, 10 to 15 percent. It's also not as qu quite as strong. It's only about 85 to 95 percent as strong as spruce, uh, but it's significantly cheaper. Uh, we operate out of the Northeast, and uh, white pine is plentiful here. Here we have eastern white pine and we have sugar pine. Both are very easy to find. Um, a lot of the good lumber yards, you go through them, you can you can locate some good pieces of wood. Um, it's not uncommon though to go to a lumber yard and walk away with nothing. Um, I've also noticed that some of the lumber yards, even in the Northeast, will still import things from New Zealand uh, where they have these uh, pine plantations and, and those that wood isn't very good at all. Uh, it's fine for other things, but not for aircraft building. So anyway, um, hopefully this is useful to you. Um, go check out our website, simplexaero.com. Check out our aircraft designs, the Zing and the Cloudster. Um, you can build a, a very light airplane out of white pine, uh, a very um, economical airplane using white pine as opposed to spruce. And uh, hope, hope that helps.